Let's get it. We're back. We're tremendous, ecstatic. This is the tremendous show, the only podcast you should be flipping, tuning into, Period. tapped in, all of that. I'm Luga. I'm Noel. That's I'm it. Katrina. <laughs> <laughs> As you can see, this is our first guest. You oh. get me? My beautiful, beautiful, good sis cat. Hello, everyone. You know, I had hey, to baby. drag you on. Like, I had to, bro. Um, yeah. Obviously, I know a lot about you already. So. So, Katrina. Yeah, mm-hmm. obviously, that's cat, but obviously, Katrina. So, tell us about yourself. Like, where are you from? Yeah, where are you from? So Country, up, area, where are you from? So, I'm English, Irish, Somalian, Italian. Who? And Syrian? No, and Italian. It's, so, Somali wait, hold on, hold on. So, a qu- so quarter Somali, Period. quarter Italian, quarter English, and quarter Irish. Irish. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, and I grew up in mm. Village, South East London. Okay. Up until the age of 12. Um, and, yeah, that's about it, really. So, if I'm getting into my life... Mm. um. I was 12 years old, went into care, went into the care system, which obviously wasn't great. But I feel like every action has a reaction. So I feel like I wasn't exactly doing the right things. And it's not like the system just come and took me off my mum because my mum was a bad parent. Mm. I was a bad child. But at the time, I feel like I was really naive. I I was angry at everybody else instead of just thinking, you know what, take some accountability. Obviously, at a young age, you don't really... Do you know what I mean? As you get older, you learn from your mistakes. Yeah, definitely. Um, so I got taken away at that age of 12 um, for some discipline. They sent me to Cumbria, Shrewsbury and Shropshire. Because every place in London that they sent me to, I'd just done a runner and just, yeah, <laughs> was getting up to all kinds of crazy activities. Mm. Um, I got taken away from Cumbria. I had an ongoing court case that was going on. Um, and I come back to London for the court case from Cumbria. And then I ended up running away from the court. Because um, mm. I didn't want to be in Cumbria. I didn't want to be taken away, like, all the way to Scotland from everything I love, you mm. know. Um, so I was on a run. I was on a run for seven months. Is it? Yeah, and then I got caught when I was the age of 13. When I was 13, I got caught and they took me away. Mm. They locked me up. Um, the reason why I got locked up is because my mum used to have a best friend that goes by the name of Gemma. I will say her name with my whole chest. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, and she stole off my family. She stole off my nan. She stole off my mum. Mm. And she's, the stuff that she stole, obviously still it ain't good within itself, do you know? Mm. But the stuff that she stole, it, it can't be replaced, you know? Sentimental. Sentimental to my family. And anyone that ever would do my family wrong, I'm going to get them, do you know? Mm. And that's now all then. Like, obviously, I am... <clears throat> Looking back, I shouldn't have done some certain things that I've done, but I stand on I will protect my family and everyone that I love. Mm. Um, so I've done some stuff. When the police caught me, I was with a lot of my friends and... Um, Everyone ended up attacking the police officers. Um, they obviously got me. They took me away. They locked me up. Um, but when I went to court for it, one of the charges was assaulting a police officer. Okay. And I'm not about to snitch on my friends. Do you know what I mean? Mm. They only took me that day. My fr- all my friends got away. So obviously I had to take the rap for that. And also getting the woman that obviously stole from my family. Um, she was the age of 24. I was only 13 when this happened. Mm. So me and her had a physical um, fight. And I had ended up going to, into the window in a chemist in Woolwich. And yeah, obviously, it wasn't the best outcome. Um, looking back now, am I sorry for what I've done to her? Yeah, in a way, you know, because she could have lost her whole life. Mm. And in a way, it did, like, fuck up my life because wait, of what wait, I've I'm done. sorry to interrupt you because I'm kind of yeah. intrigued. How yeah. the hell did her head go into that window? Because the way you said it was a set, like, it was so calm. <laughs> like, what happened? Well, you one bang there, she just flew to, in. like, digest of what I've done, you know? Mm. So, obviously, now I'm calm about it and I understand what I've done and... I faced the consequences for my actions, but um, yeah, I was fighting, 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 and I smashed her head into the window. So you physically grabbed her and smashed her head into it? Yeah. Wow. She was 24. She was a strong 13. That's what I'm saying. You're a strong 13 year old. But when you think about like Mm. fights, right, in general, it's not really about strength, it's about the anger and your heart. Yeah, yeah, it's true, because as you said, that sentimental value, all of these things. You get me? Push yeah, and I feel like I had to have my guard up anyway because she was a lot bigger than me, a lot older than me. Mm-hmm. So I thought it's all or nothing, you know. I ain't about to go down because you actually robbed my family, mm. you know. So obviously, yeah, um, there was other stuff that went on along the way, like other offences that I'd done, that, just like silly offences. Mm. They was like the main, the main problem. I got taken away for 13 months. When I got taken away, the night before my release date, 
I didn't know where I was going, you mm. know? I didn't know what was happening with me. No one was making it clear where I was going. Mm. I know I'm not allowed to have my mum now, because they and put me in a section like 28. 13. I was uh, 14. 14 now, mm. yeah, 14 at this point. Um, so I was just a bit confused. It's like, where I was going, where do I stand? No one was telling me nothing. Mm. I've just served my time for doing what I've done. So, so sorry like, to interrupt you. Where, what, what, jail, what? I was in Lansdowne School Unit. Okay, okay. And yeah. then from there, they took me to Wows, Shrewsbury and Shropshire. Mm. So the night before I was supposed to come out, they told me that I'm, I'll be going to court in the morning. But I haven't re-offended in this time. Obviously, I couldn't because I was, I was locked up from yeah, everything, yeah. do you know? Mm -hmm. So I was a bit confused. I prayed. That's when I realised I am a Christian. That mm. was when I become um, religious because I prayed to God. And God literally said to me, you haven't learned your lesson. Mm -hmm. You're not going to get what you want out of this. So mm. don't get your hopes up sort of thing. Mm. So yeah, the next morning I went to court and my mum was in court. My mum was there after not seeing my mum for the whole time I was inside too. I didn't see not one person like, but do you, and was allowed visits. I'm not going to get into that because obviously my mum had a young baby, like a baby on the way herself. Mm. She had a new partner who has been my dad ever since and I love him to pieces. Like yeah. I don't even see my, I've never seen my biological dad since mm. this whole thing happened. Mm. So that is my dad. Um, and I love my little brothers, love my family. But yeah, I didn't see my mum for the whole time, didn't see my siblings, didn't see no one, literally for a whole 13 months. So I see my mum in court and obviously I was really happy to see my mum, I suppose. It brought back a lot of emotion. And um, when I see my mum, obviously she told me that they want to put me on a section 31, I think it is. And that is basically where the system have full parental responsibility over you. Mm. And if my mum didn't sign these papers to give them these rights, they turned around and said that I will be going back to Lansdowne and I don't want to go there do you know what I mean so I've literally begged my mum to sign these papers begged and then they said I'll be allowed to live in London in a placement not far from my mum I'll mm -hmm. be able to um have home contact on weekends and stuff mm -hmm. like that so I was fine with that after everything I just went through like from Scotland up until the secure unit like I was thinking you know what this is the end of like a bad road mm -hmm. so I'm just gonna do it my mum did sign a paper and they tricked us from that call they sent me to Shrewsbury and Shropshire Wells um and it's a company called the evolution center and they wanted to keep me from that age all the way up until 18. um and i'm not gonna lie i was fuming because they said i live in london now i'm waking up from in the car and i'm in wales do you know mm. so obviously i was really emotional and upset but after everything that i went through them couple years i thought there's nothing worse that can happen to me i might as well get on with it and then just try assess it or try go back and show them that i'm actually listening on the outside world and try and make them just listen to me i suppose and give me another chance so babe don't be silly i'm fine like yeah now yeah, i feel like what well, doesn't kill you makes you stronger do you know so now yeah. i'm just like it's fine I, I feel like i needed that in life because i was so out of control mm -hmm. not getting into other things but like as the average 12 13 year old person like i wasn't I, I was not fucking normal and as a mother like i've got a little one who's five my son would be that age in what? Not even 10 years. So, I could not picture my son doing half of the shit I was doing at that yeah. age, you know? So in a way, I did need that help. I did need that so, guidance. Sorry to interrupt you. So after they sent you to Wells and they've done all of that and now you're 14 and like you're working on yourself, how long like did it take you to be settled in and have your child when? Um, so I was settled into Wales. Um, I was in education and they had a company, Evolution Centre, and it was every child that's come out of secure unit that they didn't want to let back out into the open. Mm -hmm. And it's like basically like a lockdown house. There's not like chains on the door and that and like locks on the door. Mm -hmm. It's like a house, but it's two to one. So there was two staff to me at all times. I couldn't go toilet without them outside of the toilet door. Wow. Um, even when I was going to the school, the evolution center, I was two to one. So everyone in there, there was double the adults than the children. Does that make mm -hmm. sense? Yeah, yeah. And there was only six of us. And then there was 12 staff. Mm. Um, so yeah, I had no, I had no, there was no way of getting out of there, you know, like mm. no way. That's some serious money. Yeah, okay. crazy. Mm. And then um, I made, I was really close with a woman called Sarah. She was my key worker. And I was really, really close with her. It got on now when I'm about, what, five months in mm. to Wales. Um, and I asked my social worker if I can go home for Christmas because it was coming up to Christmas now. And she kept saying like, she'll look into it if I carry on like doing good. Cause I wasn't doing bad. Like I didn't get into no crazy stuff when I, from when I went where I was. Mm. I was keeping my head down, doing my education, um, being respectful, like helping out, like doing what I was supposed to do really. Mm. Um, trying to change my life around. 
And then it got to near Christmas and a massage worker said no, like last minute she was like, no, like you're not going home. And I looked at her in her face and I told us when everything I love, I'm going home for Christmas mm. and there's nothing you can do about it. Mm. Do you know, it's been months now, everything they put me through from Scotland to running away to secure unit, mm. now to sending me to Wales. Like it was really unfair of what, how hard they was coming down on me considering I had a sister who went in care a year before me. So she, we were a year apart. So she was the same age as me when yeah. she went into care. She was 12, I was 12, but okay. I went a year after her. Yeah, Does yeah. that make sense? Yeah. And we was basically doing the same stuff, but she never got looked away. She never got taken away. Yeah. She was allowed to be placed in London, had the same person till up until she was how old, ready yeah. to leave care. Do you know? So um, I feel like that was really hard on me and it really wasn't fair. But in the same breath, I was the younger one, I suppose. Yeah. I, I was at more risk or whatever they said. Um, and then it was just trying to push the narrative on me, saying that like I was in gang affiliated violence, uh, hanging around with people older than me, yeah. um, doing this, doing that. Like the narrative that they try to spin to what I was actually up to is bullshit. Yeah. You know, it was bullshit. They say like groups of more than how many? More than five or more than three yeah. is a gang or whatever. I wasn't in no gang. My friends at the time, um, obviously during the life that I was living, I had friends that, I had one of my friends, a close friend to me, and her mum dropped dead on Brixton High Street because she had a crack overdose. She, she had no parents. I had another friend. His brother had um, schizophrenia and mental health mm. and he burnt down his mum's house. So now he was homeless. Um, I had another close friend who is now my child's godmum. Like we, and I'm her children's godmum. Like mm. we go way back. Her mum was a raging alcoholic. She had no home. So all of us together, we grew up together. We lived yeah, together. So, together yeah. so we had, yeah, we yeah. had each other. So despite me like running away and being on the wrong from a young age, like, I, I was fine, do you mm. know, I was coping because I had a whole load of people around me going through similar stuff to me, but not exactly the same. I know we you all had our own problem. Christian, but this reminds me of something. Um, God only te gives you tests that you can manage. Yeah. Yeah. He don't give you tests that you can't manage. And mm. like, honestly, I applaud you for the woman you are. Like, Thank you, you are, I appreciate it. You could have turned out yeah anyway continue <laughs> <laughs> i love you see her love you more sis and then um yeah so we kind of brought each other up you know and like every time i was on a run or i needed something like we always had each other no matter how we got it not gonna get into that but we always had it you know we <laughs> always period. had it <laughs> like and that's period the and then um yeah so when i run away going up to that when i run away from wells to go home for christmas um i had a key worker and me and her was really really close so i went education that day i come home and you know hind soup Hind soup, mm. like yeah. the kind of soup, yeah, 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 yeah with like yeah. the peas in it, the bits of carrot. <laughs> I stole some hind soup from the cupboard and I stole an like, apple. After education, I went upstairs, I went into the bathroom, I put the stuff in my pocket, I went into the bathroom and I put it down the toilet, like the hind soup, I put apple in my mouth, mm. crushed it up, spat it down the toilet, mm. spat it down yeah, the toilet. So, you look like so I looked like I vomited, mm. so I told them that I was really, really sick. And then I asked her to run me a bath and then I was downstairs. But the night before we have like windows and the windows like, it's hard to explain. Like they're really, really high, but like they're quite small. Mm. Like a, like you wouldn't be able to jump out that window. There's nothing yeah. to hold on to. Yeah. Like you, you would literally die. Do you know mm. what I mean? So I packed up my stuff in my little room the night before and I threw it out the window. And mm. downstairs there's like a big silver gate, but with, you know, like the spikes, yeah, that yeah, you yeah. can get over it. Like mm. I got over that <laughs> with like the spikes at the top. So I threw my bag out of the window and there was like a tree and a bush, like just underneath over there. And it wasn't under the bush where I wanted it to go. It was like just there. So if my stuff gets cool, mm. that's my whole escape plan. Yeah, done, done <laughs> finished. Mm. And then I built myself up. So they trusted me with a mobile phone after education times for three hours a day. So I was planning with one of my friends called Gucci, who's now, who's now um, doing life in prison for murder, um, which is quite, you know, sad, not ideal. Um, and this is when Uber first came out back in the day and he was doing deets and stuff like that. So we all planned and he said he's going to deets me a cab all the way from East London. He's going to get in it from East London, come all the way to Wales to get me and bring me all the way back. Wow. So um, we planned it out. I got they my were sick like in the a toilet. Family, innit? It's a Literally, yeah. Yeah. Um, I had the sick in the toilet and that done all that. And then I asked my key worker to run me a bath. I'll never forget it. And I was outside the front bit, and there was this guy called Mike, and he was just like one of them really. He looks like a scientist teacher, you know, them really dopey people like with them yeah. glasses and just, <laughs> yeah, he was just stupid. And I was standing there. And then there was a lot, they was letting me smoke cigarettes at the time. Like I was allowed a couple of cigarettes a day mm. because if I didn't have my cigarettes back then, I used to run, they run things, but if I didn't have my fags, that, that was my little, my little, is that pocket money to me? Mm. I'm not going to lie. I was smoking cigarettes from a young age. So disgusting. Oh, no. Thank God I don't smoke no more. Well, I do when I'm drunk, but. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> and then, um, yes, yeah, so and then I literally done a runner 
got my bag from outside the bush bit, climbed over that gate. I've still got a scar from this side of my leg all the way up to my fire where the gate like ripped my leg because it was raining. Is it? And I just ran for oh, my God. life. And I remember running, running, running. Gucci told me that he was like nearly there. He mm. wasn't, he just hit Wells. And you know how Wells, it's like countryside lanes yeah, for like yeah. hours and hours and hours. I, I laid in horse manure. I was then in horse manure. And it was the only place I could hide. Horse manure is shit, no? Shit, horse shit, yeah. Because there was like, you know them things that carry the, um, carry the horses like yeah. attached to the back of it yeah, yeah. i laid down to one of them not realizing that there was shit everywhere well, in a pissing damn know. rain it was awful because obviously i had to hide somewhere for him mm. if i just run they're gonna find me yeah, it's just yeah, one countryside mm. road like there's no getting away i laid there for over an hour i remember they was out with flashlights torches screaming me screaming my name calling oh, me i took my phone that they got me um, obviously so I can contact my friend and mm. find out like how long. I remember laying there for hours in a piston down rain, over an hour. Um, and then yeah, he pulled up and he was with one of my other best friends, Ramel. Mm. And Ramel was my age at the time. He turned up in a school uniform. We, when we got back, we got back the next morning at six o'clock in the morning. Yeah. Ramel went straight to school, didn't even go home, went in the same uniform, oh, bless him. Oh, that Uber like, driver went for a look. That Uber driver went for Isn't a lot. When, when, when I dropped into the Uber, yeah, yeah, money. Yeah, oh, no money. <laughs> like, so he still, got, he still <laughs> got paid, bro. He still got paid. <laughs> it? And um, yeah, when, when I remember when I jumped in, I remember I had my straighteners tied around my belly underneath my dressing gown and I had my dressing gown on. I climbed the fence, I had my bag, I had cocoa butter hair brush in this pocket. I was just ready to go. It's <laughs> where Michael Schofield's out, isn't it? Yeah, okay. I, yeah. I, yeah. it's so I crazy. I was ready to go, literally. And then, um, yeah, I remember I jumped in a cab and we just went. I snapped the SIM card, threw the phone out the window and I just never looked back. And I remember, I thought, if I ever go, if I ever get caught, I'm gonna do this all again, but this time they're gonna keep me locked up and there's no escape from lock up. You know, like, wow, that was semi-secure. Mm. When I was in full secure, I couldn't have escaped from there. You when know, I went to you Lanzar. know what, what you're describing, it sounds like literally what bad baby went through. You know that, um, catch me outside, how about that? But I don't, I don't even, I know about her, but I don't but know But she got locked up in, a, um, mm. in an institution. Anyway, it's, cat. No, it's on, about cat. I want to know more about you. Yeah, this is interesting. Uh, yeah, it really yeah, is. is. Even though, bubbly. like, I knew these things, mm. like, when you rehear it again, it's just crazy. Mm. Um, so now, when you got to London and then your friend Ramel goes Went to, to school, school. Yeah. what do you do next? I popped up on everyone. I said, hey, the fuck? I'm back. It's been, like, I'm back. Like, it's been <laughs> ages, like, so long since I see everyone. Um, but I knew I couldn't stay like in the area. Like mm. I knew I couldn't like, th there was none of that. So I went to Cheserton and I moved down to Cheserton. Mm. Um, I moved down to there, I was doing good, obviously hiding low key. Um, and I moved down there and I was there for over a year. Yeah, I was there for over a year. Like there was missing posters all in my area. Like even if you go onto the internet and you type in my name, like everything is still like up on the internet. Like, I hate things like that. I always used to be. And I God. asked them to I remove it and they won't remove it. Like, and there's so many articles like, and it's like, that's not who I am now. It, it, it's like, not. You I don't know, define you like, anyway, man. The past yeah. is the past, so isn't now, it? So now talking about the present. Mm. Now let's, let's go to a happier time of your life when you know, you ha got pregnant. Where was you mindset wise when, you know? When I got pregnant, How I, got, old I, that were was, you? I was 18 when I got pregnant. Mm. And I was in a relationship from the age of 13, which is a young age. So when I went through all of this, my partner was 15, I was 13. So mm. when I went through all of this, um, I actually had a boyfriend through all of this. And mm. I'm not gonna lie, like, he didn't say loyal or whatever, because you know, I, I'm not even here, you know? So, and I literally said to him like, I want to leave you and when I'm back, we can maybe take off where we left off. If you've moved on, I hear it, do you mm. know what I mean? Mm. I'm just not going to sit here and be mugged off. Like when I'm going through this, then to have you stress on top of this, I ain't ready for that. Mm. And then um, he ends up saying, I want to stay with you. Like I'm, I'm going to stick by your side. Um, I'm not going to get into too much about him because that is the, 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 the yeah. dad of my child. Do you know yeah, what I mean? 100%. No matter how many ups and downs we had. Um, but I was with him all the way, like, for years. I was with him for, what, eight years? Mm. We was with each other for a very long time. Um, and then when I got to the age of 15, obviously, 15, nearly 16, obviously, I was on a run. I was a young age. They put me in a section 31, took full care over me, and then you couldn't even look after me because you didn't even know where I was. Mm. And I was a young age. You didn't know if I was dead, if I was alive, um, if I was eating, if I was clean, mm -hmm. if I had... Like, nothing. They didn't know nothing. So my mum took it to court with the social and they went back for a section 28 or 27, whatever it was. So my mum has full half care over me and 
the authority have half care over me. Mm. And basically to say, listen, she's been running for this long. Look at her life. She'd served the time that she was supposed to do for the bad stuff that she'd done. Just leave her the fuck alone now, sort mm. of thing, you know? Mm-hmm. And um, I had to go to the glass building in Woolwich. My mum went there first to see if it was safe. They had to sign a contract um, after the court case just to say that it's not a set up sort of thing. Like they're not setting me up, the police, mm. they're not taking me. Like they want to hear what I have to say sort of thing. Mm. Um, so I told them, yeah, I want to live in London. I want to live by my mum, by my friends, by my family. And I want another tra- chance. Mm. And then f- f- like the end of my 15s, I was in a care home. Then when I got to 16, within a couple months, they literally put me in a, um, um, semi-independent living mm. and then yes yeah, so I was in semi-independent living from 16 to 18 when I got to 18 I got pregnant I had my beautiful son gorgeous um, boy I love, love him he literally changed my life for the better like mm. since I come out and since like I went on my last run I never got arrested since then mm. I learned from my lessons up till this day today Good never girl. been arrested never been in trouble with the police Amazing. don't get me twisted I'm not perfect mm. and I still have my flaws and sometimes I don't yeah. always yeah, act yeah, yeah. in the manner literally. exactly that like I'm not perfect but I am a step closer into the direction where I want to be, mm. you know? So yeah, and then, um, yeah, and then I had my son. And then, yeah, everything was fine, everything was good. I moved back in with my mum for a bit. I got my own place, I had my own place. I had a beautiful apartment, um, just on top of the new building, Tesco and Woolwich. And I lived there, and then, I can't lie, my life went whoop, downhill. Nice. Yeah, it went downhill, like, obviously the first time mum, like, my, like my baby father like he wasn't um really supportive like that like he wasn't the best version of himself that he could be mm-hmm. he wasn't a person that he said that he would be now i'm young i'm a, i'm a full i'm a first time mom like my mom even though me and her had our ups and downs with me when i was growing up mm. the minute i had my son oh my god she is the best nan that anyone could ever god ask for like her, i couldn't fault her as a nan like she is my mm-hmm. world like my mm-hmm. absolute world um, and then, yeah, like, obviously, I was just a bit like, okay, I'm young, I'm a first-time mum, I'm about to be a single parent because I ain't putting up with this shit no more. Mm. And I've got this sort of thing. Um, see, I ended up leaving my partner, then he just turned, like, really, like, violent and toxic, not going to get into it, like I said. Yeah. Um, and, yeah, it was just a bit crazy for me. And then I ended up getting evicted from the place I was living at. I got evicted 2019 on Valentine's Day, 2019. Yeah. Um, so my baby was one, do you know what I mean? Mm. I had a one year old, I'm evicted, I'm homeless, I'm a single parent, I've got no job. Um, I was literally on benefits. I had no job, I had no life. I was thinking, right, I've come all this fucking way to now what? To now have nothing, to now be no one. Mm. And I thought, no, I'm not about to do that. So I moved back in you? with my mum for yeah. a couple months. Um, I got a job for Danny Dyer in 2018, ITV in the style. Um, so that was my first ever modeling job. Period. Period. And then, yeah, um, obviously after I'd done that first job, I was still with my child's father and he was saying that I wasn't allowed to model. I wasn't allowed to get my own income. He was very, you have to stay in the house. You're not allowed to leave the house. You're not allowed to wear this. You're not allowed to look like that. He was really controlling on me. The minute I left him, I said, fuck this. I'm gonna get in my bag. Mm. Um, I met a good person called Moose and he literally believed in me. Um, he was a lot older than me. He was what, he's nearly 40 now. Um, and he literally said, Trina, like, you can do anything what you fucking want. Like, you can do this and you've got this. He started applying me for like loads of modeling jobs. I started doing freelance modeling. Then I just built my way up as time went on. Started acting, started doing shows here and there. And then one day I woke up and I said, I'm gonna have my own modeling agency. This is my passion. This is what I like. This is what I love. I love modeling. I love acting. I love this. Sort of, I, I love the industry, do you know? And then I opened my modeling agency and it went from zero to 100 within a year. And I'm really proud of that. Like, I'm and proud you should be proud, man. That's fucking amazing. I showed you. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. So I like to hear positivity. Yeah. Like, Don't piss oh, me off. I love you. Hey. I love you. Hey. I'm excited. You know, then, yeah. go on, go on, go on. I'm just saying, <laughs> like, talk up the yeah, thing, talk. man. And then it went from zero to 100 real quick. Like, um, obviously, I'm self employed. So I have, I've had jobs for Danny Dyer in a style, like I said, India, Nelly, Nella Rose, Wall of Comedy, Pretty Little Thing, Harry yeah. Pinero, Young Philly, Nintendo. Like, I've had so many big jobs. Um, and they booked my God. models for Netflix, a Doritos advert. Like, I've had so many big mm. jobs since starting this. And that's all because I did that. It's not because no one said, yeah, Trina, come mm. and work fit. Like, these people scout with me. I, I contacted these people yeah. in order to get these jobs. Yeah, of and now to be able to to get other people that are in the industry that that are coming up models or models into big jobs like this like mm. it makes me proud because of this course. is something you know that where I never you came had, like, from yeah 100 percent. and i worked my way up and i did that by myself and i'm proud um so when i opened a modeling agency 
I ended up moving into a beautiful uh, two bedroom apartment. Um, Don't say so, where. Yeah, I'm not going to say where, 100% <laughs> not, baby. <laughs> <laughs> I'm smiling in there, bitch. <laughs> Um, yeah, I moved into my beautiful um, two-bedroom apartment, moved out my mum's. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, like, from then, everything just really went up. Um, then February last year, I opened a studio with one of my close friends. So that was also another income on top of that. And then six weeks ago, we opened Mimi Lounge, which, yeah. New Year's, shell off. You know where we're here. It's <laughs> fucking lit. <laughs> and then, yeah, so now I'm just like ready for the next venture in my life, you know, like ready to carry on making it up. Like eventually I'm going to be in a place where I don't need to even leave my house. I can spend all my time with my son mm. and I can just get paid. Do you, you know, know what I find so cute about her? Yeah. And and this is something you both have in common. Obviously, I'm the only one without a child here. Mm. This girl, two days ago, three days ago, she cried. She literally on her private story, she posted her crying because mm. she was so happy that she booked her son Disneyland tickets. <laughs> and like you, you literally, your world revolves around them. Yeah, like man. I love humans that love their kids. You see me? I'm not gonna lie to you. I'm 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 never gonna be selfish. I'm never gonna bring a child into a world where I'm unable to do for or mm. you know like do, oh, i'm proud you people like you guys actually made said, me want to be yeah, a mom you said that your child kind of made you like you kind of changed you know he made me go Same harder 100 yeah. percent. and yeah the other day when i booked disneyland i cried because like i couldn't go on a flight up until mm. i was 17 america, years old right? not paris pardon which one paris or america uh, Paris, Paris. Okay, Paris America yeah. soon, see? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> my sister took uh, my, my niece not too long ago oh, on beautiful. a Euro train. Uh, it was quick. Beautiful. Yeah, quickly, like a couple hours. Yeah. And I travel quite quite a lot. Like this last, what, 20 months, I've been to what, like 11 countries. Yeah. Like I travel so much and obviously my son travels too. Mm. But um, yeah, he's just been getting on to me about Disneyland. And I thought, <laughs> you know what? I'm going to take you for your birthday and I'm going to surprise you. And you're not even going to know nothing about it. And oh. obviously, I just got back from Dubai last week. So in the same week that I come back home from Dubai mm. and just went to Jamaica for a month for my little one and done all these other stuff. Mm. I went to Dubai for my birthday a couple of months ago too. Like, in the same week that I managed to do that, I managed to book Disneyland for yeah, him yeah, too. Yeah. And mm -hmm. sort of at his birthday and yeah. do this stuff, do you know? Like, just before Christmas too, sis. Like, mm. So it's like, I've still got Christmas still with and then bills and then the dog, because I've got a chow chow dog and then really full time <laughs> mom and then work and then business. Mm. Do you know what I mean? I'm so proud I just you stand on kids. business, man. Yeah. You get me? That's what I like to see. Go Independent, yeah. you get me? Go Young get woman her. is doing her thing. I'm proud of you. Love you, sis. Now, obviously, spill the dirty juice at yeah, <laughs> so to write off <laughs> my juice. sister. You don't know about this. Yeah, I don't know, obviously. but I want to know. Yeah. But obviously, I, I it bowled my blood. Obviously, them man, they got. Do you want to tell the story? Yeah, but yeah. why don't my guy? Go into on, it. Break it down. So it down December fast. last year, so it's actually a year ago now. Mm. Um. I went on a platform to spill the juice. Mm -hmm. So I went on there and um, I spilled juice, I drank juice. I was I was sipping juice, I'm mm. not gonna lie. And I was shot in, I was drinking. How um, long did it, what time, tell them. I got there, I was the first person there. They told me to come at 5.30. Mm. I remember it like it was yesterday. I got there about quarter past five, you know, but it'd be, uh, I know I was 10 minutes late today, bitch, but don't mm. help me today. <laughs> <laughs> right. I love you. And then, um, yes, yeah, so I got there about 15 minutes early. We was um, filming with RD, Tennessee, a couple other influencers. They're the main ones that, that I remember from that day. Um, yes, yeah, so we're there now. And then RD was still coming from Brighton. He hasn't even left yet. And bearing yeah. in mind, we're filming in East London, oh, Canary yeah. Wolf. So we've got a couple hours yeah. till RD even gets here. He was like the main celebrity on the show that yeah. day because they always bring, bring out new celebrities yeah. to come and film. So we had to wait for him anyway before we started filming. Um, Pasco Petgrave, his spill the juice, Pasco Petgrave, the actually disabled uh, and paralyzed a mother of two. Yeah, that man there. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He licked a mother of two off the curb. He ran her off the curb. He took his car out of the road, went onto the curb well, just to knock wait, her. Wait, hold on. What's his name? Patty Petroff. Pasco. <laughs> Pasco Petroff. I'm calling you Patty, man. You're sounding like a Patty, <laughs> man. Big man thing, wait, man. Wait, is he on? He owns Spill the Juice? Yeah, the owner of Spill the Juice. <sighs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And I done my research when, um after, so I'll get into it. Right, but tell us the story. Then. So uh, I didn't know this when I went onto his platform. Mm. You know, I just thought, oh yeah, like he's doing things, like whatever come let's do this sort of thing so like i said i was there a couple hours before anyone um i was with tennessee and pasco and we was there we was having a drink or whatever 
this man keeps coming up to me and pouring shots. I'm talking about different color AUs, um, Henny, um, Kavos, like Magnum. Like I was so you're mixing turned, juice. Mixing juice. Ooh, devil. Most of them I'm drinking, I haven't even got a mixer. Mm. I know that no one had a gun to my head and no one told me, oh my God, Trina, mm. drink this, do you know? Yeah. But I was drinking it, like not just for nerves, but because the show's called Spill the Juice, yeah, everyone's yeah, yeah. going to be drinking mm. anyway. So now when people turn up, people start sipping and having a drink or whatever. But now I'm turned. I'm lit. Like, everyone's turning up two hours later and shit, mm. you know? So I'm already past that point. <laughs> These are I've got to catch up. Mm. <laughs> and then, um, obviously, I'm a really confident person within myself, you know? Like, I'm confident. Allah I don't feel no way. Mm. Like, I'm not going to come onto the camera or come onto the show and pretend to be someone I'm not mm. just going to fit it? in. I'm going to keep it real. Mm. And if you, you either love me or you don't, and either Period. way, Mom, I'm paid. Yeah. So if that is not us, I don't know who you know. Yeah. Like, so move, either man. way, they're not paying my bills. They're not contributing to my happiness. Fuck off. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, so, so I was there now. Um, I'm confident, like I said. Me and Tennessee had a little chat because we spent time together before the show mm. when we was waiting for everyone. She was proper nice, proper lovely. Mm. Even asked lip. to borrow a bit of my lip gloss. Mm -hmm. My revolution, good, good, new, new, new lip gloss. My girl took the stick like she has no fear. Put it on her lips like you're not known for having sexual intercourse on the net. Like you're not known for fucking um, uh, footballers, football brothers, brothers. Brothers, footballers, brothers. Like, I feel girl. Yeah. You, I, I, said to, I said to sis, I said to sis. Yeah, babe. she told the story time on TikTok. You know, I'm not really we're getting to that in a second yeah, yeah. because yeah. people want to try to chat for me. Let me chat for these people that mm. are trying to draw me out because at the end of the day, I come from the bottom and I'm on the way up to the top. I ain't had to fuck no rapper to get there. I ain't had to go into Pornhub to get there. I ain't had to, had to get in a relationship with a footballer and then sleep with his brother to get there. Mm. Everything I've done, I have not had to free up my pussy for this shit. So if a woman that wants to call herself a woman that is actually a fucking girl using wants to try gloss. using my lip gloss. Anyway, before I even start <laughs> cussing, let me um, make everyone understand why. <laughs> so yeah she was using up my lip gloss being really chatty like yeah just doing the absolute most like sh oversharing some information with me too luckily i didn't do too much oversharing with her but she was like yeah saying certain things that i'm not going to get into and i thought girl i don't I even really know you're like that because you know how i am like, how i am yeah, yeah, i know how you, know? you are but you know this is what i rate mm. because if the shoe was on the other foot and you overshared with her your whole business would have been out, out there. there but anyway mm. continue yeah what i'm smarter than that um, and then, yeah, so um, a, a girl called, well, I'm not going to get say her name, but because she's actually my friend now. Like, she supported me for the whole thing because she was actually there. But um, a girl walked on with her friend. She had a lot of confidence. Tennessee turned around and said to me, oh, my God, like, slag this, slag that. She was here the other week filming. Like, she, she does this, she does that. Mm. So already from then, when she's talking about the next, and she's supposed to be co-hosting this show. She's supposed to be keeping it 100% professional. Mm. Tennessee didn't know me from nowhere. So the fact that you're coming to yeah, me yeah, yeah. talking about a girl that's actually coming onto your platform. Some chatty business. Some chatty, I know not to trust you, sis. I know to keep your arms length, yeah. you know? So I already clocked what kind of character she was from that moment. Um, we started filming, I'm not gonna lie, she had a card and it had 12 questions on this card. And it was card questions that she was supposed to be reading out to RD and like asking him questions. Mm. I'm not gonna lie, she showed me that card. I didn't ask to see that card, she showed me that card. Mm. From showing me that card, I'm not gonna lie, I was a bit drunk. And yeah, we was all chatting and I did ask a few questions from that card. <laughs> oh well, <laughs> like life so goes well. on, this is my two minutes bitch. <laughs> like you've got enough time to get yours. No, but it's not even about it being two minutes. Look, we w this is a podcast and we're, we're talking like we, we're we both silent, like we're in truth. We tremendously talk the truth, like, you get like me? Like so you, that's it. You're, you're talking real shit, you're being authentic, you're not, Bro, one then yeah. we'll continue the conversation. Literally. <laughs> so I've asked a couple questions. So during then we're still sipping throughout filming too. We're still drinking. Like and a couple times like, I'll say something funny or I'll say something and then they'll put on like one music thing and they'll be like, take a shot or whatever they were saying. Mm. Like knowing how lit I am, like and knowing how do you know what I mean? Like a couple questions was getting asked and they could see I was burst. And every time at one point everyone was laughing, they've got up, they've given me a shot as if to say, Yeah, is that what the fuck are you not trying to do here? Mm. You see, after watching it back and realizing what they were trying to do now i'm smarter than that but at the time i see what the fuck they were trying to do they was trying to make me say some stupid stuff get drunk on my head or to go viral just for views and mm. it's like i don't fuck with shit like that and you they know? did do I don't, they, that's exactly what they done but who did it shoot in the foot not me um two months after they sent me viral i got booked for pretty little thing babe like do you know what i mean so it's like really you know and what truly they, what mm. they tried to do which got me angry was yeah they released little clippets out mm. yeah? yeah little five yeah, second like clips. little five second clips 
Tennessee tried to disrespect you as yeah. well. Yeah, yeah. She, she wanted to get Tennessee in a ring. <laughs> Tennessee, yeah, because yeah, after, obviously, <laughs> after it kicked off, she tried, like, she tried, like, do a couple draw outs, draw outs, then they tried mm. clip it and then try and make it look a certain way. Mm. Luckily, I held my cool on camera. But you see the minute them cameras come off, yeah, I was on smoke and I was saying it off my chest because no one in this life is trying to come and disrespect me. Mm. Do you know, no one in this life, I've been nothing but nice, um, respectful the whole time. So it's like, now you are trying to push a narrative on me and try and make me look like an idiot. It, it seems I don't like think to so. Me, it seems like to me what what it seemed like. I watched it all in it and mm. I watched it all unravel. You get it. It seemed like to me because everyone else like they didn't know who you was. Mm. You get what I'm saying. Mm. Everyone's got clout. Mm. That's there. Tennessee, RD, all these people got clout. So obviously, it feels like as an outsider looking in. Yeah, it feels like they wanted to fill you up with a liquor. So you draw yourself yeah, out. Mm. Yeah, yeah, you get yeah, what yeah. I'm saying? And then later on, you're the clown on that pot. Mm. Mm. Yeah, 100%. But then... <sighs> but clown for clown, because if I'm a clown, then you're a fucking clown too, do you understand? Oh, because weird. after they done all that and try like draw me out and do little things, I thought, you know what? I ain't stand silent, so obviously I'm not going to lie. I jumped up for Tennessee. It kicked off. Mm. Um... And yeah, they try to threaten me with like, oh, we'll like bring out some clips that try and make you look like a bad person. Okay, because you've already tried yeah. mugging me off. So if you want to bring out me defending myself, you go ahead and do that, hun, mm. because I don't give a fuck. I stand on business and I stand on what the fuck I said and done. So and yeah, so yeah, obviously I've kicked off after. Um, the owner of the show tried to drag me out because I was being really aggressive. And yeah, you know, I was not going to lie. I sat off my chest. I'm not a liar. So yeah, I've jumped up for her, I've kicked off, done whatever I've done. He's dragged me out now. But he didn't drag me out as if to say, dragging me out, he drags me away as if to say, we can't be doing this on the platform, we can't be fighting on the show. Mm. So when he's now dragged me out, um, he's, he's put me in a lift, he's booked me an Uber. He booked me an Uber himself. Now we're in a lift, we're going down, he's like, who's at your house? Asking me really, really personal questions mm. that you wasn't asking me on the show and you wasn't asking me in front of anyone else mm. so it's like now i'm like yeah he what well, of course he did and bro i wouldn't pipe you not on my worst day not on my best day like so you're talking about patty yeah 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 patty pasco oh, <laughs> so then um we was in the lift he was asking me like like questions that i didn't really feel comfortable with as we downstairs now, he's literally, he didn't move rapey. I never once said he moved rapey. I never once said he'd done sexual assault. I never once screamed none of that. But mm. he did try to kiss me. He literally tried to kiss me. Mm. And the place that he's actually filming, I actually know the person that, own, that owns that penthouse. Like, mm. we went my Marbella previously before that for his birthday with, like, all of our friends. Mm. Like, I know the, a couple of these people very well. So I've gone to the person after that, that happened that night and I told him, have you got CCTV? Can you go to the concierge and get CCTV mm. of that lift or outside of the lift where he tried to kiss me? Mm. Because he's saying I'm lying and I want to just go and go to the yeah, shape yeah, yeah. brother because they want to post this and that about me. Mm. But the shape brother don't want to post receipts. Let me just get my receipts because one minute you're saying it didn't happen. Next minute he said, well, you're over that age. So if it did happen, what's your point? Next, like he was just backtracking, backtracking, backtracking. And look at the guilt on them. They took down the whole episode. Took down the whole took down saying. everything, took, took down, down the all the TikTok. Took down all the juice, everything. you wanted my girl to spill the cooch, and we were mad. Yeah, but you know what's mad? Yeah. Their, man, their man asks about next man's wood. Yeah. Like, I, I've, I've watched the episode. Wife! Oh, <laughs> come on, man. Imagine you, what? yeah, like, yeah. No, no, I'm not on that, I'm not on that, I'm not on that. I'm not on that, I know my thing. Yeah, they're weird. They're not rolling. Yeah, yeah man, it's like, a mad it's thing. It's just not that. And then, um, yeah, so yeah, then he tried to kiss me. Obviously, I backed the fuck up. Drunk or not, I'm not a duppy girl. Do you know what I mean? Like, mm. I backed the fuck up. And I literally went outside of that where he was. <laughs> and I just got out of the block. And I just got my cab. I got in my cab, went home. Mm. He tried to call me twice. I didn't answer the call. I called him back the next morning because shit really went down yesterday. Mm. And this was a yeah, place of where I was working. Do you know? Yeah, yeah. I, and I called him and I said, you know what? I'm sorry about the way I acted yesterday. And he didn't think about saying sorry to trying to fucking kiss me mm. or to try and making me feel uncomfortable or to try to make me look like a dickhead on his show, do you know? He didn't do that, but I've done a bigger thing. He then said, yeah, can I take you out for food sometime? I said, like, I'll see, whatever, like, not too sure, whatever. Mm. He knew I wasn't on it. You I did not contact thirsty. him up until Dying that moment. for it. I did not contact him up until that moment, up until the show aired, which was in February, so two months after, whole eight weeks after, mm. that's when they aired the show. When they aired the show, they done little snippets. They they edited in a manner that made me look like an absolute dickhead. Like 
they try and make me look like such a fool just to get their five seconds of vibe, like, to make me go viral, you know? Mm. Like, and they did, they done their thing, not gonna lie, they made me look like a dickhead. They sent the no, thing viral. No, no, they never, because and we the time they did, for At filth. the time they did, because no one actually heard my side of it in a while. Mm. So at the time when you're seeing this drunken girl on the net, all being really bubbly yeah, or, yeah, so yeah. before people are hearing what I have to say, they're just looking at it as one drunken girl, one drunken mother has come on the show, not knowing who I am, where I'm from, the reason why I'm drunk or like that I was drinking two hours before anyone else. Like, do you know what I mean? Like there was they, key... they kept feeding you alcohol. So right, way, even on know. the camera they was, do you know? So it's just like, okay. But um, yeah, so when they done that, I literally, I called Pasco and I said to him, listen, it's either you stop making these little clips of me and take them down or me and you are going to have fucking problems, you know? Mm. We're going to have problems. I said, I haven't once spoken on the fact that you try to kiss me, you try to make me feel uncomfortable, mm. that it's kicked off, that you're feeding me up bare alcohol. Like, I will speak on what the fuck I have to say and I will get my receipts mm. and it'll be done for you because I ain't having it. Like, he must have thought, like, when he done it to Summer, Summer Bell, when you said that he was talking about next man's piece, he done mm. it to that Summer Bell girl and literally, like, he tried to draw out. Everyone on the net was cussing her and she deactivated her social media for a bit. Yeah. I ain't about to do that. He, that's mm. what he done. Basically, I remember, thank you for reminding me. So this guy actually, you know, a girl that was on Love Island, mm. he tried to make her look so bad. She looked really bad with that little clip. Mm. And then guess what? She deactivated her whole social media account because she was getting, uh, receiving so much mm. like, yeah, abuse. Hey. At the end of the day, yeah, you are a woman of substance. Mm -hmm. uh, you know me, I've got you for <laughs> life. You know what I'm life. saying? Mm. Like, and I'm happy you was able to tell your story, even in the mannerisms you speak in, like, mm. you know, like, I look up to it. Like, keep doing what you're doing. I respect you, sis, and I you appreciate know? you. I'm just so happy she come on. No, I really, I can't lie. You're doing your thing, man. You'll Thank succeed, you. God willing, you succeed in everything you put your mind to. and. You see this pod, we set up we set off on the start to talk about positivity and like better in our lives, even though we might have come from a traumatic or you know, say a criminal past or whatever we've yeah. been through, you can always yeah. do like that the best guys, for yourself. Read you know the bio. Literally, you get read me? Read the bio. And you're you're another walking testimony of someone that's been through mad shit, mm. which I pop you down X, Y, and Z. Look at what you're doing. You're succeeding yeah, in every, all your businesses, we you're refuse. doing family life. You get me? Come on, we man. We refuse to be walking statistics and we guys whoever's watching this if you ever want to come on and share your story or you know what i'm saying have like conversations of substance you're more than welcome do hit us up on our social media accounts mm. it will be right here trust me man we want doctors we want therapists we come want on, all man. of you lot on here mm -hmm. we True really people. want youth offending workers you know probation workers we just want to pick people's brains yeah, man. and the man them stop moving catty man big man thing man yeah. i had enough man it's pissing 100%. me off That's That's like, oh, and it's thing. also like like when they done the tiktok sorry going back to that guys when they done the tiktoks of me yeah i had i had fake tiktoks account in the tiktok comments like putting in um police articles and police links to like my before life mm. and it was a fake account obviously someone that's hating on me um and it was like this is who katrina is and this is why i've mainly come on here today in a while to actually say this is who i am and that's who i used to be but it's not who the fuck I am mm. no more, yeah. do you know? So it's like you guys can go on the net and get a little article of my before life, mm. but come and see who I am now and today, do you know? And um, obviously, when they done that to me, putting the links, a lot of people started realizing my before life because that's not really something I show people, you mm. know. Like if you knew me, then you know, it's you know trauma. what happened, mm. right? Everyone exactly. I don't want to be known for that, course, but it's like you know what, this is like? what's happened, and I'm gonna face it, mm. and that's that, you know. Oh, so then when mm. I done my um, research on Pasco and I found out that he got jailed for this paralyzing a mum, like the mum actually has um a youtube um channel can about like her life her YouTube channel called? um i'm gonna get the name for you i'm gonna yeah, if you I'll go into the, the line the bio. yeah put it in the link in the bio definitely see us um and it's like how her life is like since being paralyzed and obviously being a mother of two to three i think it is and yeah he licked her off the whole um pavement off the whole pavement what, like, driving while he was driving, he wow. ran onto the pavement. He didn't look over in the road. So it was on purpose? Yeah. It was on purpose. Um, there was a whole video on it. Guys, go onto the internet, type in Pasco Pet Rave and come and see who he is. Also, on another note, Tennessee, um, I feel like this girl, I don't really know much about her, but what I do know is she's a conniving bitch and I would never come onto a platform and try and drag someone else mm. down but you see me I will stand on business and I will stand on what I believe in everything that I've got I've got it by myself I ain't had to fuck no rapper to get it I ain't had ha like she was with a whole footballer for years made this man fall in love with her he walked into the hotel room and find his brother coming over her she's admitted this herself on, on TikTok. TikTok yeah she told the story and it's like how can you be standing there and then say Aye. oh my god you just come on me man must have been doing a two -two in order to make that come must out. have been traumatized 
his name that's is Tammy the... Abraham. Timmy Abraham. Don't you play for Chelsea? I oh, shit. yeah. Yeah, let's do let's Wait, hold Tim. on. Timmy Abraham. What that black brother? Yeah. yeah. Come on, my and nigga, man. And then his man. brother, yeah, he um he come into the hotel. They was out of town. Wait, his brother? Hotel. His brother. Wait, 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 hold on. She this was going out a... with him. So his brother's a snake. What's going oh, on? Oh, obviously, oh, like, because my sibling would never I be wouldn't me even like that. take that in. Oh, my I God, of course. to my home. You know, yeah. Like, oh, no. And then, yeah, her, her, her mind's coming to the room, the footballer, and then her, she's got her brother spunk all over her. And that's like she said out of her own mouth onto Lynette because I see it on my own eyes and she was the only one talking. So it's like... You've had to get uh, with a footballer, make his uh, brother his brother come on you. You're also on Pornhub with a, 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 a what's that balloon's called? Nitrous oxide, whatever it's called. Uh, you're also on Pornhub with a balloon hanging out your mouth while you're getting fucked up by a rapper. Like you're also having threesomes with your girls, and then your man is on live uh, uh, exposing you. You're also fucking for bodego boots on your feet, baby girl. We ain't the same. Everything I've got, I've got it by myself. Wow. I've never had to free it up in order to get what, what I'm getting. <laughs> yeah, self-made. I never uh, had it. How on did a I not know all of this? What's going yeah, on? Well, you know it now. Trust I know. <laughs> <laughs> on top of that, I, I wanted to fight this girl in a ring. I've gone to bounce her. I've gone to everyone that I've been you know her. She's blocked me on every single yeah. thing. She's blocked me on everything. Blocked me on everything. Like, and then you're watching me on fake accounts. Then you're blocking my best friend. My, she's never even spoke to my best friend in her life. Two of my best friends she's blocked. It's that like, bitch. You're fucking weird. You're weird. How do you know who my best friends are? But this you, is. You know what are you what saying? You got. You got. You got animosity. You was ready to scrap Paige, Paige Kagi, but you don't want to scrap my girl Cat. Right. Get in the ring, brother. Get in the <laughs> ring. Get in the ring. Get in the ring. Shout Luger. Make a set up. You know. Big man. Do thing. that. Do the damn thing. Because you know what? what? That, as soon as I get my closure from that, that'll be the last I'm ever talking on this subject. That. But I'm not gonna lie. If I don't go in the ring. I ain't even gonna do this on right now, but I will see her. You know, like no, no, we're not. We're not. You know what? You're too. Mm, come on, man. You're uh, yeah, man. No, 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 no. no, no, no obviously, no, no, if, it, if, it, if it happens, it happens. But try not to in it, because obviously, like, you get me. Come way, on, man. You're doing your thing, man. I will be behind the wireless, and I will see you, and I will see what you have to say. Or I'll be at Central Seas party on the 21st, and I will see you, and I will see what you have to say. Because it's like, and then after this, after the kickoff, you're then going on to another um episode, and then you're talking for me again. I don't talk. I don't. I'm, like, I'm a mum. I'm a businesswoman. Like I ain't got time for like violence. That. I don't but talk. I ain't got time to talk because I, I no, never no, do chat. no one wrong. Do you, know, first. Do you know? Do you know? I don't like telling Kat like yeah. um, when when I'm annoyed at people because she'll be like, hey, listen, where are they? <laughs> where are they? And, and there's two girls. No, 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 we're trying to do. We're trying to do. I don't. <laughs> I don't tell her no more. Like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, do you know what it is? Yeah, people will test you and trick you mm, out of your yeah, position. Yeah. I've had friends like I. Wallahi, guys. Girls that I grew up with, girls I will always keep repeating this. People that I put I would put my life on the line for. I was an XL bully for my whole life for these people. Try to unalive me, bro. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? Mm. Like when people see potential in you, when people see, you know, where you can go in life, they're gonna do everything to try to stop it stop and trick you out of your own position. Yep. Now mm. fighting and all of this, getting in the ring, that's professional. I'll let you do that. But scrapping this bitch on the roads and that. Why do that? Like he said, you like. No, wow, I'm not gonna lie. Bread. You like the same. I 100%, but I'm not gonna lie. Like, every action has a reaction. Yeah. Do you know? So, oh, yeah, yeah. so before coming onto places and trying to mug people off, make sure you've got hands to back it up because. Yeah. I, I don't trouble no one. I'm such a good person. If anyone's had an issue with me and if I've done anyone wrong, that's I'll because they've sorry. wronged me yeah, first. Yeah. That's because they've wronged me first. Do you know? Like, yeah. I don't go out of my way trying to look for drama, trying to cause drama. I'm, I'm happy in life, sis. I've been through shit. Do you know? I'm at a stage where I'm generally happy in my life. You know, for the that. first time in ages, I'm happy. Like, I ain't trying to go out there and fight girls and do this, but okay. I will. But I will. <laughs> You know? <laughs> you know what? I love the energy, you know, big man sing. I it's love it. Been real, but it's been, been real, but I've been real analysis. Like just because I'm on a show, like I don't want to fight, I don't want to do this crazy stuff, but I will, sis. And I and I will okay. do it. I know. Let's hold hands. <laughs> I wouldn't be letting me shake down at the gym. Don't worry, man. We pray afterwards, man. God's <laughs> yeah, got yeah, us yeah, in it. <laughs> Hey. But yeah, no one's going to trick me out of my position and I've come too far to lose focus, yes, you know, sis? Yes. That's it. Um, separately. <laughs> we'll talk later. <laughs> All right. But yeah. Positivity. Yeah, positivity. Yeah, positivity. Mm. And um, I, like I wanted to say, you know, Kat is a very, very good friend of mine. Um, you know, broski, you met her today. She's now a good friend of mine. Big yeah, man's in, you get me? Saying, so like, we, we, we're willing to, like, we're going to start having panel chats and things like that. Mm -hmm. So understand you're a friend of the pod. Anytime you got anything you want to get off your chest or anything you want to talk about, come. You're more than welcome. I'm here, hey, baby man. girl. I've been Noel. I've been Luca Bells. I've been Trina. <laughs> Take care, guys. Man. Make Bye. sure you like, comment, subscribe. All of that.
and all the details will be stay tapped in. Yeah, the the woman that petty guy. Patty Pesco P- Pavilion, man. whatever his name Her is. YouTube will be in the bio, so make sure you lot watch it as well, because that's the first thing I'm gonna do. What you know, yeah. as soon as I'm on. <laughs> but thanks for coming on, cool. Thank thanks Thank for having me, talk. guys. I appreciate you. Come on, man. Anytime. Pushing man. for greatness. Bye. Peace. That was so lit. In it, man. That, that was so brave.